time man has waged this war. It's a war that in the last hundred years has destroyed Chicago and San Francisco and consumed vast sections of Boston, Baltimore, and New York. It's a war whose soldiers are developed by vigorous training into acrobats with iron lungs and steel courage. It's a war that will never end, for fire is one of man's greatest friends and one of his greatest enemies. Young can recall this scene of the 1900s, the clickety clack of metal hoops, the plunging heads of the horses, and the fiery boiler that lit up the night. By the roaring 20s, the fire horse was gone, and firemen had to hang on harder than ever as high power whipped them through the streets. Today's hook and ladder is a battleship on wheels with every possible device for speed and safety, and the high adventure of going to blazes lives on. Buster, each fire is a new and complicated problem, the wrong solution to which might endanger not only the firemen and the burning building, but surrounding buildings and conceivably the entire community. Then bring up his heavy artillery, hoses which can pour water on the blaze by the thousands of gallons. Sometimes the smoke eaters seem to be fighting not only fire, but flood. before this is salt of water. But some, fed by inflammable materials and roaring between walls, gain in violence even as they are fought. A few may rage for days, ending finally amidst crashing brick and plaster. The loneliest of fires is a fire at sea. There is nowhere to go but to the lifeboats, and even when a burning ship makes port, blazes below deck are difficult to combat. Water is a fireman's natural ally, but too much water will sink a ship. It is not strange that fire has caused many harrowing marine disasters. Below is the Morro Castle burning off the New Jersey coast on September 8, 1934. Passengers may be seen in the water around the doomed ship. Asbury Park, survivors who made the long swim from the stricken Morro Castle are pulled from the surf while thousands watch from the boardwalk. The still smoldering hulk is beached, and a cameraman goes aboard to photograph the burned out ship while metal deck plates still hot blister his feet. 134 persons lost their lives on the pleasure liner Morro Castle. This was the pride of France on her maiden voyage in 1935, the fabulous liner Normandy, acclaimed as the most beautiful ship ever built. New York turned out to hail her as she sailed proudly to her dock. Then, in 1942, fire struck as the Normandy was being converted into a troop transport. Under the weight of water pumped into her hull, the great liner began to capsize. Soon she lay on her side in the mud, her days of glory in the past, her future the junkyard. When blaze busters have nightmares, they dream of grain or chemical fires. These materials are so combustible that the buildings containing them go up like torches. Soon, as in the Chicago grain fire, the walls are tumbling down. Torture lights up the sky. Firemen fight a hopeless battle in a building that looks less and less like a chemical plant and more and more like Dante's Inferno.
When an oil field catches fire, burning at a cost of thousands of dollars every minute, the smoke eaters face special problems. They must fight a blaze so hot that it is impossible to come anywhere near it. They must hold back a line of flames which could sweep the entire field with the speed of a gust of wind. And they must keep a safe distance from oil tanks that may blow up just from the heat, like this. Some burning wells throw up dust and dirt like a volcano. Firefighters approach the erupting crater to plant a charge of nitroglycerin in an effort to blow out the blaze. They hasten back as the well, now resembling a geyser, sends an ever-changing pattern into the sky. The nitro blows. The blaze flickers, almost goes out, then bursts forth afresh, flaming into the night. It's a new show now, featuring fiery gases that leap and dance in the darkness. Elsewhere in the field, a wall of fire sweeps forward, consuming everything before it. like miniature atom bombs to climax this multi-million dollar display of destruction. To flying rangers of the Forest Service, this is an old and dreaded story. The thing feared through weeks of drought has happened. What had been a tiny wisp of smoke a short time before has become a line of fire extending for miles. All available equipment is rushed to the sea. The blaze busters rapidly discover that they're in for a desperate, dangerous battle as bone-dry trees all around them go up in puffs of flame. The Holocaust moves down on outlying houses. Before this force, there is nothing to do but flee. And completely beyond the power of man to control, the forest blaze rages on through the night. Now whole towns are in its path. Prosperous communities of homes, stores, hotels, hospitals, all to be caught up and destroyed by the fury of fire. Eater. Whether he's a volunteer in a whistle stop or a big city fireman, the firefighter lives with danger. His casualties are great. His honor roll is long. Ice freezes his fingers. Flames scorch him. Acrid smoke sears his lungs. Where angels fear to tread, he dangles on ledges and ladders. It is his silhouette that looms before the Holocaust. His is an ordeal by fire. He is the blaze buster. <laughs> 